This is the Human Horizons Hi-Fi Z. And it's a little bit like the Shanghai Tower because it's big. It's got an amazing light show, more on that in a bit, and it's Chinese. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it, talk you around the exterior, show you its cool interior. I'm gonna try out its technology. I'm gonna tell you what's good about it. It's Rolls Royce. What's not so good about it. People might confuse your car for a taxi. And of course, I'm gonna drive it, which will also include me launching it to see how quick it is from naught to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the design of the Hi-Fi Z because it's insane. I have not seen anything like it before, though in other ways I sort of have because from the front, there's something a little bit Nissan GTR about it. It's almost like a cyberpunk version of a GTR or this is the GTR that Robocop would drive. It's crazy, but I like it. And believe me, this thing turns heads, as you'll find out later in this video. So, it's big, it's interesting looking. It's gonna be quite expensive, right? And it sort of is. The starting price is the equivalent of 90,000 pounds. But in some ways, I actually think it looks more expensive than that. Now, you can't actually get it in the UK just yet. It is on sale in Europe, but we won't get it in Britain until 2025. <laughs> a shame. On the inside, the Z is just as wacky as on the outside, and I love it just as much. Check out the design of the dash and the steering wheel, though to be fair, it's a little bit on the fat side. Can't fault the colouring though, love this purple thing going on here and here on the seat belts and on the seats. Speaking of which, these seats are lovely, very comfortable, fully electric, obviously, and they have a massage function. They feel expensive, as does the rest of the interior. Lovely material quality. It all feels very solid, look, no wobble at all, and lovely Alcantara and the headlining. I really do like it. And then there's the infotainment screen, which has really nice and very fast responding graphics. Look at that. Apparently the system that runs the infotainment screen is the same that's used in the Fortnite video game. Ooh, lovely. Downside is though that you absolutely have to control everything through this screen. And some of the menus are a little bit confusing. I spent ages trying to remember where things are and figure out what to do and how to control things. It's, it's all a bit of a fiddle. Uh, for instance, as with a Tesla, if you want to move the steering wheel, you have to go into a menu, press a button, and then you can do it like that. That's a little bit of a shame. Although I've just noticed that the pedal shifters are actually real metal. They feel nice and expensive. Now, I've just accidentally turned on the ventilation system, so let's turn that off. Okay, all a bit confusing. Anyhow, let's move on to practicality. You've got a cup holder there, and let's see whether it'll fit a big bottle. Just about. There's another cup holder under here. Will fit a big bottle. And the door bin, it's rather small, but you can just about squeeze a bottle in there like that. Not ideal. There is some more storage underneath here, though, as well. Plus, underneath the armrest, you've got a little storage area there with your USB ports and your 12 volt socket. You have a wireless charging pad here, which you use to charge the key fob. It doesn't actually have a battery in it, so you have to charge it like this. It just um, has an internal battery. Got to make sure that's charged. More on that later. Then, I want to show you this. Never seen it on a car before. When you move the seat, can you notice that? The screen is moving with me. It's got some arms behind it, which actually can tilt and angle it. So you're always looking at it at the most ideal angle. Brilliant. Anyway, let's check out the back seats now. Here in the back, the Z feels just as luxurious as in the front. You can get the Z with either three seats in the back or two seats, which is what this car has. And in this configuration, it does feel very luxurious. Once again, material quality is exceptional and it's all vegan leather, so this leather hasn't come from an animal, it's man-made, but it feels like luxury leather. The seats themselves are very comfortable and they're nicely reclined as well. And it looks very spacious back here, and it is, but some things aren't so great. You see, while you've got loads of knee room, because you've got a huge battery pack underneath the floor, the seat bases are quite close to the floor, so you don't have much under thigh support, and you want to stretch out, and there is quite a lot of foot space because you've got that flat floor, but you can't actually stretch out underneath the seat in front. It's not as comfy as it could be. I sort of want to sit like that in it. It's 
which isn't ideal. Another issue is headroom. Once again, huge batch back underneath the floor, which means that this seat, even though it doesn't seem that high, is quite high. And the roof is very close to my head. Look at that. Someone over six foot, their head's gonna be touching that glass roof, which is a shame, because it's very nice having that glass roof, actually. It's in quite a bit of light, gives you a good view out. Some other things to note, the switches for the windows are touch sensitive, so you slide to make them go down automatically, and they go down all the way, although they're not that big. Or you press them in stages, to make them go up. Also, there's laminated glass for improved soundproofing. It's nice. Practicality. So the door bins, they're not very big back here. There's no pockets on the seat backs. You do have some storage under here though, which is good. And look, some cup holders. Actually, while I was under there, I should have pointed out there's some USB seeds for charging your mobile phone. And look, you have a control panel, so you can control things like the stereo and the climate control back here as well. And there's another storage area in here final thing to show you is this huge speakers there behind your head so you can really enjoy the music as you're being driven along the boot capacity on the hi-fi z is woeful it's just 316 liters by comparison a volkswagen polos is 350 liters and a tesla model s is, is over 700 liters in fact if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the tesla model s plaid find out how fast it really is click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. So let's have a look at this boot. I guess at least it's sort of like a squarish shape, but it's not very deep. You do have some storage nets, 12 volt, and the ability to lower the seats from the back, though the problem with the four-seater version, you can't lower the central part like you probably can on the five-seater version. I'm assuming that I haven't seen the five-seater version. However, you do have a front boot, so surely there's lots of storage under there, right? Oh dear, it's actually rather small. Could you fit a laptop in there? Probably not quite deep enough to even hold a laptop. What a shame! Anyway, that brings on to five annoying things about the Hi-Fi Z. The remote key for this car seems really temperamental. It should let me into the car, but it's just not responding. And we were actually locked out of this car for a couple of hours this morning because we couldn't get in it. Turns out that it needed charging, but we have had it charging on the charging pad in the car. But I don't know whether it's just this key in particular doesn't hold charge, but we were a bit stuck. So we're going to try and charge it using a European car. I'm now going to place this key on the charging pad of this Skoda Kodiak. Maybe there's a problem with the charging pad in that car, but I don't know. Let's give it a wee while, see what happens. Actually, it's not seeming to charge now. It worked earlier. There we go, it's glowing purple now. Oh, then it just flicked off. Wonder if there's some form of like short circuit or something, or loose connection in this key. Hmm. A few moments later. All right, so now we've finally got the key working so that it's pulsing, so it should be charging. So temperamental. Don't know what's going on with it. Much later. Right, I think it might be charged. Not sure, let's find out. Bollocks. Eventually. I've had another go at charging it. Hey, look. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, really annoying. That could definitely catch you out. While the car's design is very futuristic, this pod looks a little bit plonked on. It actually contains the car's LiDAR system for the self-driving technology. However, it does sort of look a little bit like the light unit that you get on the top of a black cab, which has taxi on it. People might confuse your car for a taxi. The car doesn't have a rear window, which isn't ideal. And to be able to see behind you, you have to use the rear view mirror, which obviously doesn't have a mirror in it because there's no window for you to look through. Instead, you get a camera feed and it then displays on the screen, which is actually what this rear view mirror is. The only thing with that is that you don't get any depth perception through a camera feed like this. Look, it's just all 2D. So it's much harder to judge distances the cars behind you using that than if it was just a normal mirror. You can't actually direct the air vents at all manually. They are fixed. Sure, you can go into the menu and choose where the air is coming out of, like there down the side bits, look. 
or down into the foot wells, but you can't actually direct the vent exactly where you want the airflow to go like you can in almost every single other car in the entire world. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the Carwow 5 core features. All the doors open and close electrically and you can operate them using buttons on the doors or buttons on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and open all the doors from here. Yay! And of course, I can close them all in one go. But that's not all. If you want to be very precise with your door opening, you can do this. Select exactly how much the door you want to open opens. Very handy if you're having to open it in a tight space. Let's just shut that again, shall we? Slightly unnecessary, but also very pleasing. The Hi-Fi Z has over 4,000 separate LED lights on its exterior, and you can use them for various things, such as like displaying graphics. So there's a wide range you can choose from, and they'll display here these panels at the front of the car. Oh, look, a heart. Oh, thank you very much. As well as displaying them here at the front, it'll also display them at the rear. Plus, you can even use the headlights to project images onto the ground in front of you or onto a wall at night. So you can type some text and it'll just display it there before your eyes. Unfortunately, you can't really see it in daylight. But there's something else I want to show you. There's a huge LED panel here running down the side of the car. And when you open the doors, flashes red to warn people. But that's not all you can use that for. You see, you can also display messages on it. So let's see what message the driver has for me. Hello, sexy face. Why, right, thank you. This car comes with rear wheel steering and it will turn the rear wheels up to six degrees. But the interesting thing is that you're able to turn it off and on. I've never seen that before. It's also got air suspension, which you can raise up by using the chassis lift button like that. Also, I like this feature. So you've got paddle shifters here. Obviously there is no gearbox, but what you can do is choose what they do. So you can have them for energy recuperation. So you can increase or decrease the amount of regen, or you can switch it so that these control your driving modes. And then you can quickly just toggle between your different modes when you're driving along. That's a great idea. Loving all of that. If you don't like the cyberpunky look of the wheel trims, you can remove them to go bareback alloy style. I actually prefer the alloys, I think, rather than these. Though I do like the center caps on this that like, stay upright. Can you see that? It's Rolls Royce. The car is fitted with a dash cam, so you can monitor and record what's happening in front of you. But you can also monitor and record what is happening here in the front seats. There's me. Hello. And you can also monitor and record what is happening in the rear seats. Look, there's cameraman Lewis. Hello, cameraman Lewis. Does that hurt? Yeah. Oh, fun and games. Choosing which Hi-Fi Z to go for is pretty easy because there is just one battery and motor combination. So the car has two electric motors, one on each axle, and combined they put out 672 horsepower and 820 newton meters of torque. The car has a huge 120 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that's good for a range of almost 440 miles, according to Hi-Fi. Now, at this part of the video, I'd open this flap to talk about the charging rates, but I can't because this flap's broken. Someone broke it, and so it's been taped shut. Anyhow, this car will charge on a DC fast charger at up to 100. 150 kilowatts. Now let's see what it's like to drive. So this is the part of the video where I should be assessing what the cars are like to drive in town or in a village. And unfortunately, too many people are stopping to look at the car that I haven't had the opportunity to pull away. Nice car. Yeah, it's got a message for you, look. <laughs> There's lots of that going on. Here we go, here's another person. There are people taking photos of this car like crazy. Oh my God. Beautiful it's different, isn't it? Likes it. Right, now let's see what the Hi-Fi Z is like to drive in town. So, why is it beeping at me? Stop beeping at me, what's the matter? Right, no. What is it? Okay, we don't care about that. I don't know what that beeps about. It's annoying which is a shame because what isn't annoying is the suspension. 
So the air suspension seems to do really well at dealing with bumps. It has a slight sporty edge to it, but it's not uncomfy. What is that beeping? It's doing my head in. Try again. What is this noise all about? See, I just can't get on with this bloody review. Do you like it? Yeah. Would you rather have one of these, a Tesla Model S or a Porsche Taycan? Just on looks and how it looks inside and the fact that it can say, Hello, sexy face. I'd probably go for this. Because <laughs> you could, like road rage is going to go to a whole new level with that, isn't it? Well, the problem is, look, watch this now though. It's gone away, hasn't it? When you're in drive, it's not there. Ah, it's more as you can only do it in park. Yeah, it's just a shame, isn't it? Anyway, where was I? Oh, look, here we go, people at the pub. Yeah, look, he's getting his phone out. Do you like my car? Yeah, what is it? Well, have a guess where it's from, what country? Japanese. Japanese, American. No, it's Chinese. Wow. How much do you think it costs? Oh, a lot. 250,000. 250,000. Well, it's less than half that. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's fast, it's got a big battery, and you can write messages down the side. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, it looks like it's for a taxi, doesn't it? I'm actually trying to review it, but I can't get on with it because a lot of people want to have a look at it. I'm not surprised, it's pretty really lovely. Do you like it? Yeah. Should have a look inside? Purple. Yeah, I like a bit of purple, don't like you? Yeah, if you just move out the way of the door. Oh. Watch your baby. Hi-Fi Z. Oh, look, it's beautiful. You're lucky. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. Let's have another go at this reviewing malarkey. Oh, look, thumbs up from this chap. People are loving this car. Anyway, back to it. Suspension. It's really, really, really good. Has a slightly firm edge to it, but in a good way. Soaks at the bumps so very well. I've got the air suspension in comfort mode at the moment, but there's three different settings, comfort, normal, and sport. Now let's see how manoeuvrable it is with that rear wheel steering. Turning circle, 11.4 meters. So I should, oh, I've cocked it. This is my fault and not the cars. This is gonna cause chaos. I've got someone in a Range Rover. People in Range Rovers are generally um, lovely. They're lovely. Lovely people. So turning circle, 11.4 meters. Didn't demonstrate it very well. That was operator error, I'm afraid. It's a little bit more than a Porsche Taycan with rear wheel steering, but a little bit better than a Mercedes EQS with rear wheel steering, and quite a bit better than a BMW i7 with rear wheel steering. So visibility, decent sized door mirrors, good view out the front, it's got quite a low dash. I tell you what I do like though, the brakes. They're really smooth and progressive. Sometimes in electric cars, they can be grabby because of the regen effect. And speaking of which, you can actually alter the regen effect reduce creep on it so it won't keep on moving forward when you have your foot off the brake and it will one pedal drive so it will stop if you lift off the accelerator it's not the most aggressive the way it slows down when you're using one pedal driving but you can definitely drive around just using the throttle pedal for most of the time and only in emergencies will you need to hit the brake because look there i'm doing it again one pedal driving there you ruin it high you're still rolling forward i think it's because we're slightly downhill Anyway, you get the idea. We need to try out some faster roads though. Let's go find some. Thankfully, there should be less people to interrupt the review. And now the beeping has stopped. I changed driving mode into sport and it stopped. I can't explain it. Actually, I'm coming out of sport mode and I've put it into custom mode where I've got sporty throttle response, but more relaxed, softer suspension because I think that's a better combo. I'm doing about 40 miles an hour. Let's accelerate up to 70 to come into the dual carriageway and see how quickly this thing picks up. Cruising, 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 and now I'm gonna smash the throttle. Yeah, it's strong. It's not Tesla Model S Plaid strong, but it's still very strong. Noticing a bit of wind noise just from the windscreen, not the door mirror, surprisingly. There's hardly any road noise, though. That's really well suppressed. Generally, though, it seems like quite a comfy car that you could do quite a lot of miles in. Now, I can't actually get the trick computer up on the screen to figure out what the energy consumption is in the real world on this car. I just can't figure it out, just like the beeping noise. Some things about this are just a bit confusing. However, I have driven the Z sister car, the Hi-Fi X, and that was getting 90% of the manufacturer's claimed range. So this, if you apply the same percentage, should be able to do around 390 miles 
in the real world, which quite frankly is very impressive. And that brings you on to what this car is like to drive on a twisty road. You're gonna put it into sports mode now, which will stiffen up the suspension. Let's see how it does. Gotta remember this is a heavy car, but how will it handle the bends? really well and impressive traction. You can just haul yourself out of a bend with all the performance and that four wheel drive grip. And this bit of road is actually really bumpy and considering how flat the suspension is now keeping the car through the bends, it's dealing with that uneven road surface extremely well. Big round of applause to the suspension in this car. I tell you what, in sport mode, the steering does feel a little bit overly heavy and there is absolutely no feel through the wheel. So you've got no idea how much grip the front tires actually have, which is a bit worrying because you can barrel into a corner really quickly and assume that it's gonna go round because it seems to. There might be a point when you lose grip on the front end and you're just gonna wash wide. But I think for most people, this will go down a road as quick as they're ever going to want to. It really will cover ground extremely quickly. And it seems to do it in a very calm, relaxed and flappable way. That bloody noise has just come back. What's that all about? Anyway, the handling. I think it's better than a Tesla Model S, but it's not as good as a Porsche Taycan. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. But it's still really really impressive i don't think you're going to go out for an afternoon blast in it just for the hell of it but if you are going somewhere and you want to get there quickly across country this will see you just right and put a bit of a smile on your face with just how quick you can hurdle along hi-fi says the z should be able to do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds but i'm going to find out for myself by using my specialist timing gear I'm going to launch it yep that I got off pretty well. 3.8 or 3.87. What's the quarter mile out of interest? Quarter mile, 12.3. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Hi-Fi Z? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, in the case of this particular car, which apparently is an early car, I would avoid it. It's got too many glitches and gremlins. Here's a quick montage, in fact, of the problems we've had with it filming. Stop beeping at me, what's the matter? Where's the obstacle for that? Shut up. However, if all those issues are just a one-off case isolated to this particular car, I would say go right ahead and buy a Hi-Fi Z. It looks cool, it's lovely to drive, and it feels super luxurious. Plus, it turns heads like no other car I've driven.